you guys, I was just uh, playing around with doing the intro for the video and knocked over my coffee on the desk. Got the mouse pad wet, wet. No joking around. So okay, I didn't get the laptop wet, I was worried. <laughs> All right, welcome back to another video, mate. And uh, this week, I'm gonna be on Night Float on CTU. So, for the accent, tonight at 4 p.m., I'm gonna start my first shift at the Night Float on Shio doing CTU. Exactly what I did last week, except during the night. So, I am having trouble figuring out how, when I should sleep. So, what I did is I woke up today at 4.30, got about an hour of studying done, a couple hundred, or just over 100 flashcards. So, that way, I'm, you know, tired around noon and then I'm going to sleep from soon I'll probably just eat lunch and then sleep until like 3 or 3 30 and then leave for four that way I have some energy uh, for the night so I'm gonna look up the, the email where I'm meeting the resident who it is and whatever else I have to do oh let me tell you mornings are more my thing rather than nights. And my eyes, my brain starts to slow down after nine, 9.30. So the fact that I have to kind of tough it out until 8 a.m. in the morning is a, is a concern. It is a true, true concern. One of the hardest things. But I'm gonna try to study and, and get some work done and uh, hopefully it'll be calm enough that I can actually sleep because we do have a call rooms. And throughout this week, I'm gonna try to make it interesting I'm gonna try to give you guys some tips and insight into my thoughts, into what medical school is like. And I figured that, you know, I gotta start being more like myself. I find that on these vlogs, I'm a little bit too professional, too professional. I'm trying to like not express my emotions or how I feel in a way. Not that I'm gonna start crying on the vlog, but I wanna do, you know, more of my impersonations, my my accents and the way that I typically am when I'm comfortable around people. So it's gonna to be my goal trying to be more interactive for the vlog for you guys and um, show what happens on a night float anyways i have to check my emails to see what's going on so that i'm prepared hit something here and um and then i'm gonna sleep and take a nap for about two three hours and then go off to my ship All right, I was just working on the vlog from last week on CTU. Now it's around 12.20, I'm going to bed. I'm gonna sleep for three hours or so. You can hear the uh, washing machine. And hopefully that will give me a little bit of energy for the night. I'm able to squeeze in a couple of, a couple of naps in the morning. So, time for bed during the day. All right, I'm waiting for an Uber to go to the hospital. Save a little bit on parking. Jess will pick me up tomorrow. Right, I'm here at the hospital. Just went to handover. Got to see some of the residents from last week. And I'm with a new resident, a new team, and uh, part of the bronze team still. So night float right now has begun. And I'm gonna be here till uh, 8 a.m. and talk. I asked the resident, you know, how many hours of sleep do you usually get? She said, I've gotten as little as two hours and as much as five hours. It really depends on how many admissions there are. So let's see what happens. Expecting it to be calm, hoping to be calm. Uh, most of the patients that got handed over to us are pretty stable. So so that is good news. Uh, there shouldn't be too much there. Right now, I'm just gonna go to the resident lounge and do a little bit of studying and chat with the residents. Once I got to the resident lounge, I saw two other of my classmates that were on different teams, but were on the same overnight shift as me. The start of our shift was really calm. We sat in the lounge for majority of the time. We relaxed, we studied by doing flashcards, and we also chatted with the senior resident. And I find it's always helpful to ask lots of questions, get to know their background, get to know why they went into pediatrics, and they give you a lot of advice. So always ask people for advice and <laughs> why they chose to do what they do. Within the first couple of hours, the resident got paged to see a nine day old baby in the NICU, the newborn intensive care unit, to do a well baby exam so that baby could be admitted onto our floor. So I went up with her and joined. And the cool thing is that during this week, right now that I am recording this video, I'm actually following along that journey that this baby is on. So it's really cool to see him get admitted and I'm following every day. After this baby was admitted, I came back to the resident lounge, did some more studying, and the senior resident offered to buy the entire team Starbucks drinks to help everyone stay awake. <laughs> It's so well needed and appreciated. So you know what I ordered? Take a guess, I'll give you a couple seconds. 
Okay, I ordered a pumpkin spice latte because that thing is delicious. I did not expect for me to enjoy those drinks so much. All right, so it's 10.38 p.m. and the senior resident just asked me to go see a patient, adolescent, who was using some street drugs. So anyone who's over the age of 12, I have to do a heads assessment. That's a mnemonic, which stands for like home, education, activities, drugs, and so on, sexual activity, safety, and screen for like suicide depression so i'm gonna go talk to this patient see how they feel ask them all these questions and then report back to the resident so I'll go do that right now HEADS is an acronym for the topics that the physician wants to be sure to cover. They stand for home, education, activities or employment, drugs, suicidality, and sex. Once I finished talking to the patient and his mother, I came back to the lounge and proceeded to complete his admission notes so that I could then show the senior resident. The neat thing is that after I talked to the patient, I sat down with the mother and really got to understand his backstory, got to understand what kind of environment he's being raised in, what kind of environment he is having at school. And it was a nice way just to kind of listen to the mother. It was very therapeutic for her, even though it was midnight. But that's a really cool part that I want to share with you guys for listening to this vlog of that connection that I had with the patient already in third year all right it's uh, midnight i talked to that patient talked to the mother doing a heads exam on somebody who's slightly intoxicated is, is challenging so i'm just uh grabbing my dinner i haven't eaten yet and uh, i'm gonna go eat and present the case to the resident and see what's gonna happen and hopefully after that i'll be able to go to the call room and take a nap for a couple hours All right, I just finished presenting the case to a resident. It's two o'clock in the morning, it's been such a long time. So I now have to go find my call room so I can go uh, sleep for a little bit. I'll wake up a little bit later in the morning. All right, I have no idea where this room is. So I'm gonna walk around for a bit. slept from 2 a.m. to now, so I've got a decent five, five or so hours. Um, I can hear the resident's alarm go off in the next room where the medical student. So I'm just gonna go change, I'm gonna change here and then go to the bronze room, find the resident, and then we're gonna do the handover at 7.45, and then I'm gonna go home. So I actually slept really good. This bed is like firm and I thought that'd be bad, but I woke up fine, but I'm excited to go home and sleep in my own bed. So Jess ended up picking me up around 8 a.m. Came home, we ate breakfast. I ended up taking a 30 minute nap because I was tired. Exercise now, I'm just gonna study, do some flashcards for the day, make sure I keep up with everything and uh, just chill, it's a day off. So I'm gonna try and get some work done but not overwork myself. Uh, working the nights is definitely, feels different, hits the body differently, but I'm glad that I was able to get at least five hours of sleep. When I'm studying, I do flashcards on my iPad because it's easier to carry around than my laptop and I can sit in a comfortable position on the couch or in a chair anywhere. And I try to avoid sitting at my desk as much as possible. And if I have the energy for it, I will stand and study. But after a long day and night at the hospital, I just tend to chill on the couch and study in different positions. Hey, so it's Wednesday. I have another shift today starting at 4.30. After the first half of the day, it's already noon. I did some studying, exercising, the usual. I'm just gonna finish doing some more flashcards and I'm gonna actually take a nap. For the last time on Monday, I took a three hour nap from about 12 to about 3.30, ate and then went to do my night shift. And it was pretty good because I wasn't hungry during the shift. I ended up eating dinner around midnight and then went to bed at two in the morning. So I'm gonna try and replicate that since I had good success. And we'll see if today's shift is gonna be busier or the same. Usually when it's calm, you're studying, if it's busy, you do work and hopefully they get a good amount of sleep tonight as well. 
After my nap, Jess drove me to the hospital. This time, I decided to not wear scrubs because I wanted to wear something a little bit more comfortable. And when I asked the senior resident, hey, you know, is there a policy for what I can wear? He said, yo, man, I'm not the style police. You can wear whatever you want as long as it's appropriate. And so I chose to wear something comfortable. And that's something that I heard is more typical in pediatrics. All right, I'm here at the hospital. It's gonna change room and I'm meeting up with residents. All right, guys, the lounge just got a massage chair. Like this. All these settings. It massages everything. That's pressured your shoulders here, massaging my feet, pressing my calves, massaging my back, my neck. Sick. Woo. I better get off here and go to handover, or else I'm going to be, uh, be late because I'm having a massage. After handover rounds, the night flow team met in the resident lounge. And I'll say this, I thought that it would have been a busy night, but it wasn't, not for me. And unfortunately, I didn't get to see a single patient all night. The resident was busy and getting paged all the time, but he never asked me to join him and to help. So I thought he had everything under control, which he did. So one lesson I would recommend to any medical students watching is always take initiative and at least follow the residents for the first hour or so to build some chemistry, some rapport with them and get to know them. And I made the mistake of thinking that that the residents would ask for help, but they never did. And because of that, this person was not really able to evaluate me on anything, on my history taking or physical examination skills. And it just happened to be that we didn't really get any admissions either, or else I would have gotten more experience. So that's just one piece of advice I want to share with those of you listening. Always take initiative. Later that night, I bought myself a pumpkin spice latte, the same one that I got on Monday, because having like a dose of a caffeine helps me have energy and stay up until midnight, and plus it tastes really good. All right, so it's been pretty calm. I'm just gonna go upstairs, get coffee in Starbucks. All right, the senior told us that we can uh, go to sleep if we want. And that because I've only done one admission so far for night float, that I'm next up to bat in case there is an admission. So I'm going to sleep. Hopefully nobody shows up because I really want to sleep. I have to leave my phone on, on sound so that I can hear her call me or message me. So yeah, I really don't want to wake up halfway through the night because I'll be like rock. You gotta get through that hump to be able to go see a patient. Anyways, I'm back in the same room and uh, I'm going to bed. It's midnight and I'm tired. Good morning. It is 7 a.m. in the morning and I didn't get called uh, one single time. So I was able to sleep from around midnight to 7. Got somewhere between 6 to 7 hours and I slept all right. Did a lot of tossing and turning. The fact that I didn't get woken up aside from text buzzing, I uh, was pretty good. Just getting ready. Gonna go to the resident lounge, see the residents and see if I need to do handover, which I don't think I do since I don't have a patient. Um, and if so, then I might be able to leave a little bit earlier and go back home. All right, I have to go back to the school because we have to pick up PPE, our personal protective equipment for upcoming clinicals. I don't know why or which clinic requires it, but we only need like three days worth. I still have stuff from last year. So I'm gonna go drive to the school right now, quickly pick it up and pick up a box for my friend or a bag for Nick because he also needs it. And then I'm gonna come back home and just study for the rest of the day. It's almost noon. I just kind of took the morning off to, to relax and uh, unwind. I guess I still kind of feel a little tired from last night, but I gotta make the use of today and tomorrow and get a lot done. Got the PPD for myself and Nick, and now time to go home. All right, I am at the hospital it's Saturday. And I'm gonna start my shift at the CT from 7.45 to 5 p.m. today. It's gonna meet the handover team. I'm here a little bit early. It's gonna be normal, just like my previous week's videos. So the handover room is locked, and I just remember that handover happens at the resident lounge on the weekend. So I'm gonna go over there. All right, 
so I just finished reviewing four patients that were given to me this morning. I'm gonna go up and meet the resident and the doctor and do some rounding around the table. Uh, it was kind of hard to learn about four patients all at once, but you learn by doing things, right? You get thrown in the thick of it and there you go. So I'm gonna go up now and uh, do some rounding. The hospital just called a code blue on one of the floors that uh, typically covered, but none of them are my patients. Um, so I think a lot of staff are gonna go up there. Code blue means cardiac arrest, so it's definitely not good. Just finished rounding and discharging a patient. It's around noon, almost 1 p.m. I'm gonna go and eat lunch and then write up some notes for the day. Just warming up the lunch there. I brought a salad and a little bit of meat on the side. We're here with discharge a patient. Now I just have to write progress notes and see some patients. I actually haven't even seen them. We just talked about them on uh, rounds. Not sure about admissions, but the cool thing is that the doctor is Brazilian. So we're both Brazilian, so we just chat in Portuguese. Well, it's a different dynamic when I'm talking to somebody from Brazil. All right, just finished visiting the patients. I accidentally brought a stethoscope. I have to go take it back to the fifth floor. So I'm gonna take the elevator. Now uh, I have an hour left until I write, until I go home. So I gotta write some progress notes. I'm always whispering because it feels very awkward to talk in a hospital vlog, but I do it for you guys. So smash that like button and then drop a comment, subscribe. Share this video with your friends. All right, just finished writing my notes and the charts and I'm ready to go home. I am so tired. I don't know what it is. Just working a full day gets me really tired. I'm looking forward to go home, eating dinner and not having to work tomorrow. Although I will be probably preparing this YouTube video and then recording another YouTube video. So there's always work to be done. Overall, this past week went better than expected. I was actually able to get some sleep during my night float shifts, but I do want to leave you with a couple of lessons, which are always take initiative when possible and learn how to optimize your time. By optimizing your time, you can directly increase your impact in the lives of the people around you, whether that be the lives of fellow medical students, residents, doctors, or patients. If you can be efficient, if you can manage your time well, you're going to impact the world around you significantly. If you want to increase your impact by optimizing your productivity. I created an online program called the Unstoppable Performance Training Program that helps students like you get back 10 or more hours every week. If you're interested in increasing your productivity while decreasing your anxiety, then go ahead, click the link in the description and book a call with me just to chat to see where you are, how I can help you, how the program can possibly help you in your journey to increase your impact in this world. That's it for now. Like the video if you do, subscribe if you haven't. Come join my medical team and I'll see you in the next video.